So, hello everyone and welcome back to another build episode. If you haven't seen any of the other ones, go check the playlist out up here. And if you haven't seen part two, one, sorry, of the kitchen build, you can also go check that out in the card up here. And I decided to split into two because by the time I'd editing everything I've already done, it was 20 minutes long and I've still got a few finishing touches and draw fronts and doors and stuff. So that's going to be that. But today, I uh, just went and collected this from the post office because they can't be asked to deliver to my dad's uh, and everything just goes to the sorting office basically. So yeah, basically the same one, slightly different model but principle is pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's just a slightly different flow rate and pressure, but same body and stuff. In fact, I think the head's slightly different. I still need to open the cupboard and check. I haven't actually got that far yet. Uh, it didn't come with the little right angle um, things it had last time, but that's no problem because I didn't use them anyway. It just, the pipe I have fit straight over them as is. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to just open the cupboard and let's see if we can swap it out. And let's, fingers crossed, fourth pump this is, fourth pump. Let's hope this one works. So here is old and new and as you can see what I was saying about the head being slightly different uh, It really does look quite different That end there This one's got cables coming out the side. This one's got cables coming out the bottom So fingers crossed this one is the one that works. So hello everyone a couple of days has now passed and I've done the new countertop um, and the pump did work uh, It still does pump pump all works uh, but the plumbing wasn't strong enough to hold the new pressure because it's the first time my plumbing has actually been under pressure and it was leaking and then I tried to do it up and I sheared it off so I've, I'm trying a new component this time and it still hasn't come I've got the hose clips for it up here and then this I'm just going to open the drawer and screw in from the inside uh, the pallet wood and that way you won't see any screws and it'll all cover the pocket holes and finish up it up all nicely and then I should pretty much have a fully functioning finished kitchen so let's get to chopping lots of pallets So, there we are, that is each of the drawers. Top, second, third, fourth, there you go. So I'm just gonna get the screws and screw them in this way. Yeah. 
So, it appears getting this first one in is the right faff. Uh, that's why I've only done one of screw so far. Because, obviously, you want the jaw front to be centred. And currently, where I put it is too far out, so I need to move it in a tad to probably there. And then you have to go down here, hello, <laughs> and uh, make sure it's straight to the frame, etc. Which it appears to be. And then uh, screw the second one in. So, there we go, one done. Uh, I'm going to do the door handles in a minute. Uh, and catches because it, it, they have got kind of latchingness like the table but the table one's very strong whereas these are just very weak so you go around a corner and the, the weight of the stuff in the drawer would just make it fall open so I'm going to put catches on them uh, but yeah I'm just going to repeat that so you don't need to see that over and over again so I'll do the others without filming but I think I'm only, only going to do one in each because uh, it seems to be holding, doesn't move uh, and I'm running low on screws I might put two in the outer ones because then obviously if these ones can't move then nor can the middle ones but I don't know uh, I'll see how many screws I've got so far I've only bought two boxes of screws for this whole van build I'm going to go do the other ones and then I'll come back to you when I'm putting the handles and catches on so here we are everyone they shut nicely as you can see uh, I still haven't put the catches on but these handles really basic pretty cool things uh, just come with little screws. Uh, they're supposed to be copper effect, but they look more like the uh, bronze effect catches I ordered. Sorry guys, the light on my camera just died, but as you can see, these are the catches. They're just roller catches and you take that apart. Um, ooh, they're quite stiff to be honest. There you go, and it comes apart. Uh, and yeah, these are the bronze effect catches. But yeah, they work really well. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mount uh, this piece on the drawer itself and this piece uh, on the uh, on the frame and I may have to add a bit of batten behind because uh, the 12 mil ply that I built the drawers with obviously goes in so this is going to have to be recessed back because this is going to be screwed onto the 12 mil ply so here as you can see everyone um, what I done is I cut another bit of pallet wood in half and this is really simple way to make a door um, that overlays out pallet wood or you can just do a bit of plywood or something um, but this is an alternative like the shake style doors that everyone does so just like slatted um, and it looks really nice once it's on there and I stain them darker so what I did is I cut this in half because it doesn't need to be that thick uh, it's just a piece of pallet wood and uh, you don't want to go in all the way to the edges because it's overlapping the frame I mean if it's going inside the frame then it doesn't really matter but yeah, that's why I'm doing this. And then you want to make enough room for your hinges, depending on what hinges you're using. And then the catch, depending on what type of catch you're using too. So it, it all depends on what you use and how you're doing it. So I'm going to put two screws in each end one and then one in every other one. And that should stop the end ones from uh, shuffling about. And therefore hold all the middle ones in place. So I'll just use a countersink and countersink them first. I don't bother pilot holding it because normally it doesn't need it. I'm using these, I think, 3.5 by 25 mil screws, or maybe 4 by 25. Um, I think it might be 4. But yeah, so you just want to count sink. And then screw. Obviously, you want to make sure your screws are not too. Um, long of course and then what I do is I put one screw in here so you can still move it around a bit a bit of flexibility and then pull it in nice and tight get the screw ready what you should have done <laughs> um, and then simply screw it in and now that's just kind of clamped it together and I do the same with this one and then I fill in the in insides Oh, yeah. 
So, hello everyone. I have uh, just done the door here, as you just saw. Uh, got, I almost did like two sets of two screws, uh, but yeah, didn't. So that all works. Uh, looks nice. Need to give it a light sanding, um, and then we can go to the van and chisel out the frame and fit this with the hinges and catch and door handle, and then give it a nice coat of varnish. So let's go ahead and do that. So. Hello everyone, uh, the drawers went well, and well, it's a bit of an interruption, but um, here's the door, and the drawers went well yesterday, uh, got all the catches and stuff on, uh, and they run smoothly, and you can shut them and they stay shut like that, you can just go, and they just stay nicely shut. Uh, so, the door, obviously I want to rebate or chisel out basically um, a recess in the batten, now this door is slightly different. Normally there's nothing above them, uh, to every other one I've done, including uh, the one under the sink, this one here, has nothing the other side. So I can just uh, overlap the door by a little bit uh, and make sure the hinge is fully on uh, the batten. Whereas this one, because this door is dropping down, because it, it didn't make sense to lift it up, because then you'd have to lift it all the way up to there. So it makes more sense to drop the door down so you get in. And for that, this hinge needs to be obviously not too low, otherwise it will hit um, with this bit where the diesel heater comes out. So what I've done is I've drawn a line on top of this bit of wood, and it means the hinge overlaps by about five, no, maybe three mil. So not too much, but it does overlap a little bit, so that's all. So once I've drawn that line, I line it up at the bottom. I work out where it wants to go as well, because you don't want the screw to go in the middle of a bit of pallet. I always do it second one in, so not the outside one, the, that one in. Not this one, but this one in. And then we want to make sure that's lined up and draw a little line. I have checked that it doesn't go in between the two bits of wood. And then draw another one this side. And then you end up with a, a little box to chisel out. And then you get a chisel. I use a 13 mil for most of it. If you need, I use a big one inch one and uh, just shave it flat. But yeah, just do that in both those places. Uh, and that's really simple. You don't need to do it in the door, just in the frame. Make sure it's flush. I do it about maybe six mil, five or six mil. Once you've got your line done like that, you just simply use a chisel the other way, so then you don't just dig in and it, it scoops it round like a spade and scoops all the excess out basically. And because you've created the lines, it shouldn't uh, go past the line but you will have to deepen them because you often can't get it all the way six mil in. Once you've got what looks right, give it a test. No, you don't need like another two, two, maybe three mil. And like I said, you will keep having to go deeper on the outer edges. Often this edge will just split because it's with the grain, well, depending on which way your grain is going, obviously. There you go, done one, as you can see. This door should go on there and the hinge should fit comfortably across which it does so that's all good so for installing the catches uh, very simple as well I put the this bit on first here um, because this bit's got adjust adjustability it can move a bit uh, and on the feet as well uh, it's got like long holes uh, and Basically what you do is it's easier if you can get your hand behind that's that makes life so much easier So if there's two cupboards next to each other you can get your hand behind up here There's a gap in between the underneath the oven and I can stick my hand behind and hold it there uh, While you do that otherwise best way you get to know the catches over time and Basically with installing this I found I'm sure it's the same with everything But if you're mounting it like the doors on top like I am if you make it stick out maybe two mil, so all you've got to then do is find the centre point where, where it should sit and then work out where like that is in relation to that. So you've got to work out where it is left and right. And then back and forth, I work out it's about two mil. It wants to stick out from the frame. And then if I hold that in place, I've only got one screw in at the moment, uh, it should clip in nicely. Right, and once that's in, it slots in nicely, as you can see. And then the handles, very similar thing, work out where you want it. In a way, I kind of want my handle there, because it would match uh, these drawers, which I did yesterday, because that's in the centre of the drawer. I don't know, where do I put it? So, I do all this by eye, which probably isn't great, but um, I do, what was I doing, it's centred. There you go, 
So, now I'm going to varnish all of the um, kitchen stuff. So that is the kitchen, uh, pretty much done. Just need to paint the frame, which I will wait and um, include in this video for you lot. But for the most part, the kitchen is done. As you can see, there's this drawer here. I put the front on it, uh, which also needs varnishing. Basically, just need a big old varnishing session. The, the countertop needs a second coat. If you haven't seen the countertop video also, uh, you go check that out up in the card up here. Because, yeah, that's part of the kitchen. So if you're interested in my kitchen build, I'm sure that'll be great um, information. Let's get varnishing. So I've just painted the drawers, and now I'm painting um, all of this stuff. So... It's really, I mean, not painting, sorry, varnishing. And I just, I start with the top edge and then I finish with the face side. I think I mentioned the way the tap is made, which if you haven't seen the tap video, go check out there. Um, you have to put it on and then like kind of build it into the countertop. So then I had to take it apart. And uh, this was leaking when I got the new pump, but it did arrive. I've just put some PTFE tape around it. And what it is, is uh, I've taken the pump back down because it was in the way as it wasn't being used. So I've got the same 15 mil pipe. And I think I mentioned I got the new pipe clips i have got the new pipe clips that are like this and they're basically like a nut and bolt and they tighten it on and they've also got a little shroud thing in there uh, so that they're really good they don't shear off like I did the other ones so and then this is 8mm braided hose now it does say use a minimum of 9 but I'm using 15mm copper pipe and 15mm pipe here and this is 9mm so I'm pretty sure it'll all be fine um, and this is pretty thin walled if you look at that but basically Hopefully I don't shear this off, but this is like, as you can see, it's barbed. So that's going to go on there with a the Jubilee clip nice and tight, and that should not leak. So it's a right faff to get to, because it's right at the back of this cupboard, the bottom of the tap. But I'm going to try my best, I'm going to try not to shear it off, but get it nice and tight. And then I'll squeeze this braided hose over it, with a Jubilee clip, not forgetting that. Um, and then give it a test, and fingers crossed, this should be it, and it should work. So uh, I'll get back to you when it works, and I'll show you the running water. Fingers crossed. Please, please, touch wood, it really wanted to work. So, hello everyone, um, I'm back. It's currently the next morning and it's lovely and windy and rainy. What video are you recording? <laughs> right, yeah, the pump. I've got it all working. I've now installed an isolator switch, so when the water pot would possibly run out for whatever reason, you use it all. <laughs> when there's air in the system, the pump doesn't build up enough pressure and therefore just pumps, even if you turn off the tap. Uh, so you need a way of isolating it and ideally not going round to the back, opening the doors and pulling out the fuse. So I've installed a little isolator switch in there, um, which is good because when you turn it on, as you heard a little pump then, this pump is a gate valve, not a ball valve. And basically, yeah, there you go, you can hear it. It leaks a little bit. So there's no leaks underneath. I've checked, I've been checking ages. I've left it on. Give it one more check. Yeah, fingers are bone dry. This though, after a little bit, after about five, 10 more seconds maybe, there you go, load of water drips. Basically, that tap is no good as um, under this pressure. I don't know whether it's that specific gate valve or whether that's gate valves in general, but I'm not going to risk it again. I'm going to buy a ball valve with a lever. It also means you don't have to turn, 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 turn like you do with the gate valve. You just turn it once, like 90 degrees, and it's all on. So that's the plan. Um, but yeah, the pump is all working, and I'm very happy to finally have a pump after going through four pumps and many different piping systems and attachments and plumbing bits. So, hello everyone, and I'm back. Today, I'm going to be painting the frame. So, I'm going to be painting the frame with this, and it is from B&Q, and it's the Good Home brand. And if I turn you down a bit, you can see that it's called uh, that. <laughs> 
And basically, it's a bit lighter than the colours I was going to go with, which um, I was starting to think the two colours I was deciding between were a bit dark. So we went for this, because one of them they didn't even have at, the sh at our store. So... I went for this one in the end, and uh, the tiles behind me, as you can see, they're going to be cut in half and put along here. I'm not going to use these light ones anymore. Uh, but basically, we guessed the colour was similar to this. And as you can see, kind of, it's pretty similar. Not the same, but uh, we thought, oh, does that go with the outer side? And uh, it kind of did. And then you've got the dark doors as well. Well, I've taken the doors off because I need to paint around them and it's a bit hard with it on. And if you take a look over here, you can simply see that I did a little test patch. I have sanded it back now just to get it all smooth, but um, I do really like the colour. It's nice and light, which is good, and um, it's flat matte, so like there's no gloss at all. It's like literally chalk almost. Uh, but yeah, it seems durable, it's nice. Uh, I may add the lacquer to it in the future, but I haven't bought it, don't really have the money. Uh, but went ahead and bought the paint. So I can't take the drawers out because I put the catches in and it would take literally an hour to take all these drawers out. So I can't be asked. so these drawers are staying in here and I'm going to have to paint around them very carefully. So for actually painting the paint on, I'm going to be using one big brush and one small brush. This is one inch and this is half inch. This one will just get like right up against the edges and this one will be good for like the main part of the frame. So that is all good. Uh, but yeah, so I'm just going to get ahead painting and that, that'll be that. <laughs> Let's go. So I'm gonna use a spoon to open it because because I have a spoon close. One thing, just remembered, probably wanna mask it off. So I'm gonna go grab some masking tape and then we shall resume. Hello everyone, it's painted and it looks so nice, I really like it, I'm really happy with it. You can still see the old light where I doubled up the countertops. Uh, if you haven't seen the countertop video, I think I've already said it, but still, go watch it, be in the description too. Um, yeah, really, really happy with the paint and it looks amazing really. Uh, I just want to say I've never really painted wood before. Uh, I think on one or two occasions before, but mostly I just varnish wood and I've I, I did a bit of painting in a house before, but it's it's quite different wood. And I remember reading on this flat mat good home stuff just on a couple of the paints. Like there's brush marks, it won't go away, it ruined it. Like one, tip one, don't put too much on. Cause it spreads, unlike my varnish, which I'm used to, it spreads and spreads and you can just like really spread out the paint and you don't want to layer it up because then you get brush marks and uh, yeah, it's quite thick so they don't disappear. Uh, and also once once you've done a bit, you don't want to go back over it. So you want to paint it, you want to make it all look nice and then just carry on moving. You don't want to go back to it because it will have half set and then you will muck it up. So there, if you're going to use this paint, just bear those two things in mind. Also. I've got a new tap. Take a look at this. So now, boom. You get a little dribble. Uh, and also, now the pump doesn't go off constantly and you don't have to turn, 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 turn. It's just a whip, whip, really quick. So, quick water. But yeah, it does do a bit of dripping. As long as it's warm in here though, that'll dry out. So in the meantime, while painting this, I've also been painting the overheads, which uh, if that interests you, you can go check out the card up here to where I built and painted and did the same as the kitchen. Uh, but yeah, so 
Here it all is. I didn't take the doors off like I said, but I did take this door off and I put all the doors back on and it's all good. And yeah, it's the following morning, by the way. Uh, I've managed to get all this stuff. Well, it's half 12. It takes 12 hours for the paint to dry. So it probably wasn't 12 hours, but it, it was it was the next day. So I, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, but I recoated it about a day later, so yeah, that's all good. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video because I can imagine it's probably going to be quite long, like part one, and I don't want to make this really long either. So there's still like some tiling to do and stuff like that, but I will save that. I'll make a dedicated video for that stuff. So do make sure you're subscribed down below because you don't want to miss that and hit the notification bell. And if you haven't liked the video, make sure you do and drop that comment down below on any questions you've got for the paint, the kitchen in general, anything. And if you haven't watched part one, why not? Go do that now. Anyway, I shall see you in the next video.